If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn over to Revelation. Uh, we are in chapter 7, or getting ready to start uh, chapter 7 in our study of the book of Revelation. This morning, uh, what we, we are in a place, again, uh, where we need to do some uh, basic, uh, just behind-the-scenes study going forward into this portion of chapter 7 and then two other places in the letter. What we're looking at is the question of insets, parentheticals, uh, uh, in, the, in the text, uh, interludes, supplementals, uh, they're, they're called many things uh, in the book of Revelation. Mark Hitchcock, I'm going to quote a few or share a few things, excerpts from, from uh, various uh, Bible scholars, those who've dealt with the book of Revelation, as to uh, the issues we're going to address here real quick this morning. First, Mark Hitchcock, in his little book that many of you have, if you don't have it, it's excellent uh, companion to a study of the book of Revelation, very, very, very much so, and that is his 101 answers to questions about the book of Revelation. In, the, in that book, he states, in the book of Revelation, the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls move the action forward. We're seeing that. We've been in the seals. We've seen how this happens, this happens, then this happens, and this. We see the action or the events moving forward. But then he says, sprinkled between these series of judgments are interludes or breaks that allow glimpses of the key players and events that are part of the unfolding drama of the ages, part of the revelation, the book of Revelation. Walvert said this regarding chapter 7 specifically. He said, in contrast to chapter 6, which seems to give the chronological sequence of the major events of the Great Tribulation. Thus saying, he's saying it's being unfolded. We're seeing how it's sequential, it's successive, first seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal, and so forth. Then he says, chapter 7 does not advance the narrative but directs attention to two major groups of saints in the tribulation. So what's Walbert saying? He's saying when you get to chapter 7, we're, we're seeing something that we don't really know where it is, where, where it sits down. When did this happen? When was the ceiling of the 144,000? How do we get this multitude up here before the throne? Where's this coming from? Because we've just seen these seals unfold, but this doesn't seem to be placed within any one of them. It doesn't say this has happened in seal six or whatever. So he, he's, he's making that point. J. Vernon McGee has this to say, the book of Revelation has been labeled a book that is difficult to understand. Some say it, say it is just a mumbo jumbo of a great many visions which are out of this world and which no one can understand. And I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of people, and sadly, many believers, who stay away from the book of Revelation as far away from it as they can get, because that's exactly how they feel about it, if they're honest. They feel like it's a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, and nobody can understand it, and it's subject to whatever whim or fancy, because we've seen so many whims and fancies put forth as truth that this has happened, this is what this is saying, and that the believer over the, over the course of all of their Christian walk, they're like, what is real here as it relates to this book? So anyway, he goes on to say, this is J. Vernon McGee, this is his opinion. He said, it is my conviction that this book is very logical and is divided in a very simple manner which no one can uh, not understand. That meaning he sees this book as just the opposite of a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And I'm going to tell you, if you're honest with the book and you read this book and you just move through the book, 
It's not a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Now, are there symbolical things that are set forth, like the beast with the four, and all of these things that you got to wrestle with, and and the the beast out of the sea, and the beast out of the earth, and you got all of these things that you got the red dragon, and all of these things are those things needing interpretation? Yes, but can we understand what's happening if you read the book? Well. According to J. Vernon McGee, you sure can. And I'm telling you that as I've read the book over the course of my Christian experience, I've never really struggled with the idea that the seal one, seal two, seal three, seal four, seal five, seal six, and out of the six comes the seven trumpets, out of the seventh comes the seven trumpets, one, two, and, I, and so you just move right through. But the question that, that, that really creates problems is what we're going to address this morning. Then Cohen, in his book, and by the way, I'm going to say it again. I've said it multiple times. This book is worth its weight in gold as it relates to the chronology, the unfolding of the chronology in the book of Revelation. It, it, you can read it in about two settings. It's not that uh, uh, thick to read, but what it conveys is phenomenal as to understanding the chronology, which it, it, the subtitle, a comprehensive, uh, comprehensive study of the chronology and interpretation of the book of Revelation. And why is this so important? Because you have to understand these things or you are going to end up with a bunch of what? Mumbo jumbo. Just like J. Vernon McGee said, when you don't, when you don't let the scripture speak for itself, and one is followed by two, and two is followed by three, and th and so forth, and you move through here, and you let the scriptures speak as it's presented, and when you when you try to make it fit a theological position, you end up with a mess. You can end up with a real mess. So. What Cohen says there. So what's this all about? Did I read that all? I didn't even read it yet. I got to read it to you. Wait, let me read the paragraph. After the major chronological positioning of the seal trumpet, uh, seals and trumpets, trumps, excuse me, after the major chronological positioning of the seals, trumpets, and bulls has been determined, as is the case in the study at hand, it is at once noticed that the happenings of the tribulation, Revelation 6 through 19, have by no means yet been exhausted. This is so because amid and after the narrations of, these, of the three judgment series. So what he's saying, the judgments are presented. There lies a body of material located in Revelation chapter 7, chapters 10 through 14, and chapter 17 through uh, 19, which contain various additional explanatory uh, and supplementary sequences, basically more information presented in a sequence. There are accounts, often parenthetical in nature, inserted just at the right moment as insets or episodes so as to give the, a clearer uh, total picture of past, present, and future happenings. So what's he saying? He's saying these inserts have a place and they have a purpose, okay? So what we're going to deal with today is we're going to start talking about that. What's this all about? These, these, these things I've read, they're self-explanatory, but I want us to get there on the same page. The understanding a reaching and understanding as to the insets, what has been called the insets, interludes, parentheticals, supplementals, uh, and their uh, coming to an understanding regarding these insets and their uh, placement and purpose in the flow of the context of Revelation is the issue at hand. That's what we're wrestling with. Where do these things come into play? Are, what are these things? Because th they can confuse you. Now, as we've already studied so far in, in the Revelation, we together, not, not just the, the biblical text, each, each exposition, which we've gone through, but we spent some time uh, understanding that there is a logical and a, a, even a divinely ordered 
progression in, in the book. It's all divine. But we have a divine outline given to us. This book I love because you don't have to outline it. It's already done. God did it. In the, in the, the major points of this book, it's already been outlined. Where? Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. The first break is the things you have seen, the very first point of the outline, chapter 1. The second uh, point was the things which are, chapters 2 and 3, which are the church messages. And then the third break of the outline is where we're at. Where are we at? We're looking at the things which shall take place after these things. After what things? After the church things, this is what's going to unfold. And that's where we find ourselves in our study. We are currently moving through point three of the outline. However, as simple as that seems, there are and there is material included in the flow of the book that can be troublesome to the, to the reader. I've already been asked, I, people reading ahead and studying this book with me, I've been asked by them, where, when does the 144,000, when do they, when, where do they come from? When are they sealed? At what point in the book do we get the sealing of the 144,000? Because we got all of these people being saved and around the throne that we've already been told are martyred in the, in the, the, the fifth seal. And we got this, where did they come from? Who are these people? And where, do they, where do they come from? Well, you got to wrestle with that. Now, we've addressed extensively to date, we've we spent two weeks just dealing with the successive nature of the, the, very, the three series of judgments, the seals, the trumpets, the bulls. We've, we've noted that they are sequential, they are successive individually in their un, unfolding each series, one, two, three, you know, we got the cardinal, the ordinal numbers, we've noted that, and we've also noted that they are also uh, sequential or successive in how they're presented in the book. First you have the seals, then you have the trumpets, and then you have the bowls. The bowls don't explode over in the trumpets, and the trumpets aren't exploding over in the seals. It, it is sequential. That's what we've noted. Uh, we've studied that. We've looked at that. The matter at hand, though, yet to be dealt with, are these inserts, or these insets, and we'll call them insets for the most part. And we're going to ask the question or try to answer the question their chronological placement and purpose now these will be handled i'm going to say right now i have my purpose today my purpose today is not to expound or give you an exposition on 144,000 or the multitude uh, before the throne out of every people tongue and, and nation that's there in, in chapter 7 what we're talking about are the inserts. We're going to be general to a certain degree. In the expositions, I'm a, we're going to address all of it. We're going to, we're, I'm going to tell you where they, who, who, who I believe they are, what I believe Scripture teaches us regarding them, their purpose, where they came from, the whole nine yards. We'll address those. But right now we're just talking about these inserts and understanding what they are in the, in, the, in the study of the book of Revelation, you have to know this. You have, you have to have it. Whether you want to hear it or not, you need it. I'm just telling you, as a student of the Word of God. So, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try and reach that. So, building now upon conclusions, by the way, that we've already reached, we're, we're building upon the successive nature of the judgments as we've seen them. And how, how we're looking at the book of Revelation. The way we're taking the book of Le Revelation is just as it's written. Okay? That's what we're trying to do. We're not jumping in over, in, you know, bringing the, the cart before the whores and back and jumping backwards and placing. We're not doing that. There will be those kind of movements as to coming back. And, and this, is, this is telling us what took place here. Or, and we can sort that out by the events as they've been set forth in those judgments. You'll see that as we move through the expositions uh, going forward. But we're going we're gonna to build upon the conclusions already reached, and we're going to seek to determine the cr chronological parameters of these insets. And here's what I'm talking about as it relates to the chronological par parameters. Are the events 
that we're seeing within the entire tribulation period. Like these, in, what were, are, are they happening throughout the entire uh, period? The seals all the way through the bowls. Is this what's happening? Or are they happening in the first half? The first uh the half of the 70th week of Daniel, the, the beginning of birth pangs. Or are they happening in the second half, which is identified as the great tribulation? The, 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 the time of, of the, greatest, uh, ra the greatest portion of God's wrath being poured out there. Or is it way past? Did these things happen in the distant past? Because the historic position, which we noted in our introduction of the book, they believe all of Revelation has already taken place. So they see it as distant past. Or are these things, some of these things post-tribulational? They happen after the trib has occurred. And the question as to why they are inserted will be uh, addressed as well, the purpose of them. So this morning, you're in your notes, the transitional statement there this morning, we will identify these insets and we'll note their purpose in the revelation. That's what we're doing this morning. That's, that's our goal here. So with that, I want to go, go ahead and get started. And I want to point out that there are three, there are three insets within this section of Revelation, which is identified as the things which shall take place after these things. So where are we at? We're in the last point of the outline. And within that unfolding of the judgments, there are three different inserts, interludes, supplementals, whatever you want to call them. There are three different portions of the letter that that's what's going on. That's what the, they're put there for. So trying to place them and say, okay, this is all happening in the, in the fifth trumpet. All of this or whatever. No, don't, you don't have to do that. You have to just understand that that's given us greater information as to the events that are occurring as these judgments are being poured out. Okay, so, th so that's what we're seeing here. So with that said, let's go to the first one. <laughs> The first insert, or inset, I should say, the first one is the sealing of the 144,000 and the multitude from the tribulation, and it is chapter 7. That entire chapter 7 is an insert, is, is an inset. It is a supplemental. It is, not a, it is not one of the seals. It's not one of the trumpets. It is, a, it is a parenthetical meant to give us more information. So the ceiling of the 144,000 we're looking at here. So what we have is in the midst, when you look at what's going on, is in the midst now, because we we've, we've already gone through six seals. We've, we've looked at the six different seals. Rapid fire. We're in the first half of the tribulation period with the six seals. And we're moving right through those judgments. Some of them are, 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 are well, all of them are, are very powerful. But we lose a quarter of the earth's population. Last one we looked at, we have all these cosmic and earthly upheavals in the natural order of things. Earthquakes, uh, stars falling from the sky. We have the, the, the sky being rolled back as a scroll. We looked at all of that. In the midst of these rapidly occurring judgments of the seals and possibly part of the trumpets as it relates to this 144,000. In, in light of these, the, the unfolding of these judgments of the seals and the trumpets in chapter 6, 8, and 9, that's what's happening in those chapters, we are given a supplemental insert of chapter 7. Chapter 7 is, is a insert. And in that, we're going to look at next time, we're together, we'll look at the, hundred, the ceiling of the 144,000, and, and then following that will be that great multitude uh, in heaven uh, that have been harvested out of the great tribulation through martyrdom, and, and, and they're, they're, they're with the Lord. Now here's the question, that the, this chapter 7 falls... What we're saying is it falls in, in that first half, that first half of the tribulation, possibly 
through the middle part, okay? And we'll deal with that. There's a lot of things that give us a pretty clear indication as to when this 144,000 are sealed, what they've done, the work they've done, and, and God's role for them, okay? We have a lot of that explained when we go through the exposition. But like I said, we're just noting what it's, what, what's this about. We have this, this insert. Why is it here? here? The answer is this. I'm going to give it to you. Got all this judgment occurring, and then all of a sudden we have the ceiling of 144,000, and we have a multitude, innumerable number, around the throne of people who have been saved out of the tribulation. What's that about? Here's what it's about. What, is, what that chapter does is it's meant to showcase the mercy and the grace of God in the midst of this judgment. We have salvation of souls in the midst of unprecedented judgment. There has never been a time such as what's occurring in these seven years. Never. There's never been anything like what this earth will see and go through during those seven years. But in the midst of this time of judgment, this is so wonderful and powerful. What we find in chapter 7 is God's grace and mercy is on display. You say, well, how is that? Because he seals 144,000 Jews. And we're going to see what that's all about when we go through the exposition. But not only that, he saves an innumerable host of people, Gentiles, Jews from all over the universe, all over this globe are going to get saved during that time. And, and what we should say is this is a time of God's wrath, but you can't separate who he is. And in the midst of the darkest times, what we've seen throughout scriptures is God still saves people. And he does so. And so this, this insert, though we're in this great and horrible time of, of judgment, because a lot of people would write off all of humanity based upon that passage in 2 Thessalonians that says God's going to pour out strong delusion upon those who have not received a love for the truth. Well, we, we know that that doesn't mean all humanity because what we see in chapter 7 is there's going to be an innumerable uh, amount. The, 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 the language is it's going to be a host that you can't hardly number that are going to be saved during the tribulation period. I love that. That's my God. Though the earth deserves his judgment, he's still saving people. He's still harvesting souls that are going to enter the kingdom and enter into an eternal relationship with him. Second insert. The second insert. The second insert is chapters 10 through 14. Chapters 10 through 14 are a parenthetical or a supplemental, an insert, an interlude. And these come before, this, this interlude comes before the bowls. It comes before the bowls. Most of you have a study Bible in, in your lap. Hopefully some type of, you at least have a Bible. But, but some of you have a, a study Bible. And within the study Bible there will be headings that aren't Scripture. They're just no, uh, uh, notations as to what's in the various breaks throughout these, these sections. And if you'll notice, there's a lot that goes on in chapters 10 through 14. A ton. But what you're going to find, if you look at it, you've got the angel and the little book in chapter 10. Uh, I'm not going to go into all that, but it's where he's told to eat the book, and it's going to be sweet, but then it's going to turn bitter in your stomach, and it's talking about the, 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 the time and what's taking place in this time. And it's sweet to know that Jesus and God is being uh, justified in his person and he's being revealed for who he is. And, and he is what he's always said he is. But yet it's bitter because there's great judgment that, that that's here and wickedness breaking forth in this world. You got the two witnesses in this section of God in chapter 11. And then in chapter 12, you got the woman, Israel. And then you've got the... Uh, Reference made and, and uh, 
a person brought on the scene, the dragon, which is Satan. He, he, he comes on in, in the foreplay. Then we have the male child and the, and the dragon after Jesus, out to kill Jesus. Then you have the angelic war in heaven where, where Michael is uh, let loose and he, he gets to throw uh, Satan uh, out of the heavens and the demonic horde. Then you've got in chapter 13, you've got the beast who comes out of the sea. Then you've got the beast who comes out of the earth. Then you've got the lamb with the 144,000. Then you've got the doom of the worshipers of the, of the beast. And then you've got the reapers that are sent forth. This is all occurring in chapters 10 through 14. What's that all about? What's the purpose of this inset? This, 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 these, these events that are conveyed in this second inset, you could note it, they occur before the bulls. Okay, so before any bull judgments are poured out, all of what we see in chapter 10 through 14 is occurring. So it's somewhere, it's within those trumpet judgments as the trumpets are, are being poured out. Then we have a break in the trumpets and then ultimately there's this insert. Well, what is it? It's meant to tell us what's going on, what, what has happened how is all this coming about? But this specific insert, the purpose is this. If you want to put it in a statement, the purpose of this insert, if you note, and even in your study Bible, and you go through there, you'll notice that the focal point of it is the satanic empire of the Antichrist. We learn about the, 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 the empire of the Antichrist and its growth how it's growing and it's increasing and it's becoming increasingly more wicked and more, more, uh, more discernible for who it is, that this is, this is the Antichrist, this is Satan, and it also portrays the advancement and, and the increased defiance of the beast and this empire of God. They hate God. And, and early on in the early part, which we've already gone through six different seals, we've seen some terrible things happen. But we've seen this one on the horse come forth, which we've identified as the Antichrist. And he came with a bow, meaning he has military power, you know, plenty of it, but he doesn't have any arrows. So he's not even wielding that military power. He's coming as this world leader and he's regaining peace in the world through the, the ability to wage war. And rather than wage war with him, you just, you just concede to his desire for peace. And he brokers his peace. But when we get to this inset, we'll see how this, this all comes about. So it's meant to show us that. Finally, for, for today, the third one. We have the third inset. The third inset is chapters 17 through 19. 17 through 19. Where we're at in the progression of the letter now, hopefully you're seeing this, and I want you to go home and think about what I've said so that you could see that this isn't as confusing as people make it. Because have you ever seen those charts? Have you ever seen those things where you stretch? I remember when I first turned around to the Lord. And I don't remember what pastor it was. I might, it might have been Pastor Gallagher. I don't remember who it was. But, but we were in Revelation, and uh, they put this display up. And it accordioned out, and they had this display, and it was a timeline. And there were pictures of, of horse, you know, these beasts and the dragon. And it's real colorful and it's real powerful. But man, you start trying to, you're going through there and you're trying to see what's happening. You just, you get lost in all that's going on. It's not that tough. It's not that tough because of what we've already concluded and we've, we've gone through. We understand that God gives one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven for a reason. Why? Because two follows one, three follows two, four, uh, four follows three, and just right on down. I told you the seals are first, then out of the, and so you see how it, it develops. There's really no reason to get all 
lost in this, if you understand what's going on. And so what we're dealing with are these inserts and their place. And the third insert is chapter 17 through 19. Where are we at in the uh, contextual flow of the book of Revelation? Where are we at right now? Well, we're following now, this insert follows the emptying of the bowls. The bold judgments and their wrathful contents. By the way, divinely wrathful contents. And you could say the righteously wrathful contents of the bulls. Everything that's, on, that's poured out is, is merited. The judgments. Uh, it, it, it has a purpose. Uh, and God is, is in control. He's the one who opens the seals. And within that seventh seal are the trumpets and the bowls. They're, they're all within the scroll. It's all there. And so it all is, is, is initiated divinely for divine purposes, ultimately. And following the emptying of the bowls, of their wrathful event, uh, uh, contents, we have this final insert. And what it does, what we have with this one, What's going on here is it details for us the final righteous destruction of the satanically controlled earthly kingdom. So it, it, what we have is the final insert detailing the, 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 the final righteous judgment or destruction of the satanically controlled earthly kingdom consummated with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's happening. So you have these three, because if you, if you just took those, those plate, those, I, I, I'll be honest, if you, it's in, it's powerful to me in my study, because I'm, 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 we're going deep here, but I have to really sort this out. And if you just took and went to chapter seven and did seven, you wouldn't know what to do with that at all. If you went to the next insert and just took that insert, you'd have no clue what to do with that at all. And if you went to the final insert, you might have some clue of what to do with that because you're at the end of the book of Revelation, you know, for goodness sake. So you, you would almost say, okay, this is recording the events right at the second coming of Jesus Christ. So that's not rocket science. But here's what's wonderful about it. When you, when you wrestle with these things, you could see that our God is in control, that He is a God of order, that this isn't Him juggling anything to keep up with the machinations of Satan or the beast or the false prophet or any of it. It's, it's, he's in absolute control of everything, so much so that he can tell us not only that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seals, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, tr seven trumpets, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bowls, but I can tell you specifically what's happening on this earth while all this is happening and how, how this all comes about. He tells us all this in these Insert. So it's very, very powerful. It should be very, very encouraging to us that our God is God, that this book of Revelation isn't a bunch of mumbo jumbo. It is actually a book that is very ordered and very detailed. And we're given great information as to how these events uh, in this time of wrath unfold. All, who, all the players all the personalities, their place, their purpose. And the beauty is, is it all comes together when you understand that, that, that God is, he presents this in a successive way. One event follows the other and so forth. And so we're going to be dealing now, next time with the, in the insert, we'll deal with this 144,000. I want to say this. This 144,000 is a very powerful thing for, for several reasons, which we'll look at. But they, 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 they serve a, a, an immediate role. They serve a, an immediate role within the events of the tribulation period. They have a purpose in that moment in time that is very significant. And we see the fruits of their work, I believe, in the record. 
uh, of what they, their, their purpose was in, in the revelation. But they also serve a greater purpose in keeping with the fulfillment of God's promises to the people of Israel. And we'll address all of that. I want you to turn back real quick to chapter 1, and I want to leave you with this this morning. Chapter 1 and verse 3. When you feel overwhelmed with all this instruction, because what basically what you did today is you didn't get any preaching, you got teaching. I'm, I'm teaching you about this book and how to understand it so that when we go forward, you're not lost. I, 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 you'll, I, would, I would lace it all in, but it, it, it helps to just take the moment, take the Sunday and lay it out so you can go and process this. Because in verse three, we're told something. It's, we're told, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it for the time is near. Now I want to just point out something. There's a blessing that goes with you in the study of this book. What we're doing whether you know it or not, you're blessed. We're blessed by this. But it's the blessing is connected with the reading of it, just reading it, but not just that, hearing it, which me, speaks of what? Well, he tells us what that speaks of. It, it allows us to understand it so as to heed it and let it have its desired impact upon us. And so God's intent, what I want you to understand is God's intent is that you do understand. You should never be content to look at the book of Revelation or any book of the Bible for that matter and be able to have somebody dismiss it as a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And God forbid that you should ever do that because God didn't give it to us so that we could just live in a mystery about it. He wants us to understand it. Hear it and let it have its desired impact upon us. For the church, for you and me, this was written to the church, by the way. This book was written to the church. It was given to the church. So what was God's purpose? They're not even going to be here for chapters uh, 4 all the way through. So why didn't we just stop with the throne room scene and we're all up there and we could just skip around. whoop de doo we're good to go. Why? Because God wants us to know how it ends. He has an impact upon us. What is it? It ought to motivate us, just like our theme of the book. It ought to motivate us toward a life of purity in the full knowledge that He is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He is God's final word. He is our salvation. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And He is coming back. And our lives in light of all that and how we know it ends, because I'm going to tell you, if we never knew how it ended, would you still be here today? I don't know that I would. Because unless I know who he is exactly who he is, why serve him? And the ultimate revelation is that he is coming back and he's going to establish his kingdom and he's going to set things right. And he's given us this. So we need to strive to understand it. I'm just preaching at you now about why we do what we do. It's so that you can understand this. And you can process this in a right way. That's the goal. So keep praying for the study. We'll, we're, now we're, we should, we're done with this, okay? We're done with these, these, uh, these sessions where I'm just teaching about how to look at this book. Now we just do exposition. We just move through Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity uh, we've been blessed with here to prepare ourselves going forward so that we can rightly process what we're looking at, understand 
the, you, that you are uh, in, in, in complete control, that you are moving the program forward, and we, under, we can understand the information you give us as to how it relates to the progression of these judgments and ultimately your ultimate revelation at your, your, your coming and the establishment of your kingdom. Bless each one, Lord, for coming out today. Bless this week ahead of us. Help us to count for your glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.